If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, when driving at night, what is the scariest slash most unexplainable thing, creature, etc., you've ever seen? I'm a native person, and I was visiting my mom, who is an elder now. We were talking, and then she mentioned seeing a weird animal on their farm over 40 years ago. They had just come back from a long trip and pulled into the yard when my mom spotted a weird creature standing near some bushes in their yard. It had a cat face, soft triangle-shaped ears, a pink nose, white whiskers, and a long fox tail with black rings on it. It was the color of an orange or brown fox, and it had prickly fur like a fox. She said it was about as big as their dogs. They were used to seeing and hunting raccoons, foxes, coyotes, wolves, bears, cougars, etc., but this was a weird creature. It stood there for a moment, then ran into the bushes. It was summertime, and this was in a place called Saskatchewan, Canada. Several hours away from the USA border, the only closest zoo at the time was Winnipeg Zoo, another eight-hour drive away. The reserve is where the boreal forest and plains meet. I started looking up animals with ringtails in North America, and the ringtail cat keeps coming up, but the only difference is that it is much smaller. I had her take a look at the ringtailed cat, and it was similar, but she was adamant the face was more cat-like and as big as an average dog. I was wondering if anyone had spotted anything like this. This story happened to me a while back when I was a kid driving on an isolated road in Canada. We were supposed to be at our location at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but it had been a while since then, so I can't fully remember the drive. All I can remember is my mom yelling in anger that we had been moving in circles since 3 o'clock. So she stopped the car and exited it to look around. She walked and looked past the curve, then came running back to the car, got in, and locked the doors. She then threw the car into a full speed, then spun the car around as we heard a loud screech. After that, I looked at the rearview mirror, and I saw something at least 16 feet tall, with arms longer than its body and a long neck holding its tiny head. Its jaw extended longer to the ground, and the sides opened to show over 100 teeth. Around my area, I've been getting glimpses of some large animals with wings. At first, I thought it was a large owl, as I've heard hooting in the dead of night while waiting at a red. One night I was driving back home when I saw it fly into the light for a brief moment, and I immediately knew it was no bird. The wings had multiple angles like those of a bat, but I know of no bat that can grow to the size of a small dog. This incident was just after the sun had set, and I looked around and other drivers stopped at a red light, and no one appeared to have noticed. I rode down my window and asked the driver next to me if he had seen something large with bat-like wings, and he just shook his head. To this day, I have never seen it again, but I am still wondering what kind of animal would have those kinds of wings and be that large. It was July 19, 2016. I remember the date because we had our annual Christmas in July at my in-laws. And it was a crazy full moon. We had left to head home, so we took the back way. We live in a somewhat rural area, so the back way is very dark, there is no traffic at that time of night, and the speed limit is 60 km per hour. As we're driving along, we're about 5 minutes from home. Out of the corner of my eye towards the forest on the passenger side. I catch a glimpse of something moving fast. The moment my foot hits the brake, my wife's hand grabs my leg. I get goosebumps as I type this as it was a crazy experience, we come to a screeching halt on the road, and whatever it was stopped dead in front of us. It cocked its head to look at us. We both at the same time said, do you see that? It was huge. Best guess, it was 7 feet tall and had yellow eyes that glowed from the headlights. And it was muscular and skinny at the same time. The most memorable feature, though, were its legs. It 100% looked like a dog walking upright with a cocked angle in its leg. No sooner did it stop and glare at us, did it continue to bolt across the road and vanish into the forest on my driver's side? The only way we have ever been able to describe it is werewolf-like. And like I said, my wife and I both agreed. If we had not both witnessed it, I'd have called myself crazy and never mentioned it. But we both saw it. There is no question about it. Ghost? Werewolf? No idea, but whatever it was was huge, mean-looking, and fast. This happened to me and four friends back in 1996. We had gone to a nearby state park to walk the trails. We got there at midnight, and I remember that the moon was full and we could see everything. We were parked at the edge of the lot, about 15 feet from the trailhead, with only a one-lane road separating us from it. We were getting our SHT together to head up the trail when we noticed what looked like a flashlight at first, still far up the trail. We stopped to see who was coming because the game warden up there is a serious asshole and the park is technically closed. It was moving pretty slowly but finally came close enough to tell that it was a lantern, flickering as it was slowly swinging back and forth. 
We were all like, WTF? He wouldn't have a lantern and would have already been yelling at us, so we waited to see who it was. It finally got to the trailhead, right across from us, and stopped at the edge of the road, maybe 10 feet away. It was a lantern, still slowly swinging about 3 feet off the ground. But no one was holding it. It was just hanging there, swinging slowly back and forth. Never before have five teenagers piled into a car so fast. At least two of us had our legs still hanging out the windows as the driver peeled out of the lot. I've never been back there at night, especially at midnight on a full moon. It was my senior year of college, and my best friend and I were driving south to meet a friend in Florida. We were on a small back road, about 40 minutes or so out of one small town and about 40 minutes from the next. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there is a deep fog. I had to turn on the windscreen wipers to continue to see the road. I looked down briefly to adjust the wipers, and when I looked up, out of nowhere, there was a man standing halfway in the road. He was unlike anything I've ever seen. White skin, white hair, white clothing, and no shoes. He had his arm out, signaling for a ride, and he didn't flinch when our vehicle went by. Worst of all, he had these glowing white eyes. Now, I've seen plenty of animals' eyes glow. Dogs, cats, you name it but I've never seen a pair of human eyes reflect like that. It was unnerving. Anyway, I swerved out of the way, laid on the gas, and kept going. My friend and I were both quiet for a moment, and then she asked me, did you see him too? And I said yes. She paused and then asked, and the eyes, I'm not crazy, they were glowing, right? I reassured her that I saw the same thing, and we haven't spoken about it since. To this day, I think about the man with the glowing eyes. Where did he come from? What did he want? And worst of all, what would have happened if we had actually stopped or crashed while swerving to avoid hitting him? I live about 10 minutes from a haunted graveyard called Gypsy's Graveyard. Everyone has different experiences here, but the most common one is a trail that appears to some people that takes you back into the woods where the actual graveyard of the Gypsy was, or you will see a light of some sort in the woods, like someone is walking to you, but it just disappears. I have had a few different experiences here. But the one that creeps me out is when me and two of my friends decided one night to go to this graveyard because my one friend didn't believe the stuff that happened here and also because she just got a new car and wanted to go driving. The way the cemetery is, it's on a back road, and the road kind of goes down a hill right before getting to the cemetery and goes upwards right after. We decided before getting these that we would drive past once to see if anyone was there, this is a small cemetery that has a few spots across the street to park. As we approach the spot on the road where the cemetery starts, the car dies with no warning, no headlights, and no radio. The car just kept coasting, and since we were going down a hill, the car coasted past the cemetery till we got completely past it, when all of a sudden the car started up again. We thought it just had to do with something wrong with the car, so we keep going down the road a little further and have no issues. We decided to turn around and go back and stop since we saw no cars parked there, but as we get back to where the cemetery starts, the car does the exact same thing, and as we pass, we see what looks like a girl in a dress standing on the side of the road. It was too dark to make out any facial features, but the moon lit it up enough to see her. As we coast past and make it to the other end of the cemetery, I look back, I was in the back seat, and the girl is gone, and the car starts back up again. My friend who didn't believe now believes and refuses to go there. Recently, my younger brother's girlfriend was driving out to see him at UMass Amherst out in Amherst, Ma. On her route of travel, she traveled down US 202 for some time. It was later at night, about 11 or 12 on a Friday night, and it was a really warm, foggy night. She was driving with her windows down and was coming around a bend in the road when she approached a small, dirt-covered rest area. Standing on the edge of the rest area, right by the road, was a man. He was just standing there, looking at the road. As she neared, however, the man started to twitch, almost as if he were having a tonic-clonic seizure while standing. She drove past, as it was late at night and there were no cars nearby that the man could have come from, it seemed like he had walked there. Now, about 10 miles down the road, she saw the same man standing on the side of the road, screaming, but no sound was coming out of him. There had been no cars that passed her between seeing him for the first time and seeing him 10 miles down the road, and there were no ramps between the two sightings. She told us that after seeing him again, she suddenly grew extremely cold and sped up to escape him. The next day, she told my brother the story as they were driving along the same stretch of road, and where she had seen the man for the second time, there were approximately five wooden crosses on the shoulder. She had been unable to see them in the fog the previous night, but confirmed that the man had been standing roughly where the crosses are. Just for the record, this girl is a marine who is frightened of nothing, 
so the fact that her second encounter with this man frightened her so badly is very disconcerting to me. I heard a knock on my car's mirror in the middle of nowhere. So, I work as a security guard in various hospitals, and I keep changing sites during my shift because that's what my job requires me to do. I was going to another site tonight around 0030 when I stopped my car on a signal. The roads were pretty empty as usual, maybe due to the long weekend here in Canada. It was all dark around, and not even a single person or car could be seen during my drive. Then I stopped on a signal, and my car turns off automatically when left idle, and then I heard some kind of knock, as if someone were knocking on the back mirror of my car. I looked around from inside but couldn't see anyone around and checked for all the mirrors and doors as they were locked, and then I left. In my town, there is a road that has a tree right in the middle of it. The road was literally built around the tree due to nobody ever being able to chop it down, pull it out, etc. You can see axe marks, chainsaw marks, etc. The story goes that three witches were hung on this tree. Down the road, there are a few obvious humps in the road, which are where the witches are supposedly buried. This tree is called the witch's tree. In high school, my group of friends and I visited the tree a lot. Never did we touch it, stand next to it, etc. Well, one night, two of my guy friends decided that they wanted to be brave, and they urinated on the tree. They got back in the car, and we started driving to get off the road. Within minutes, there was a car that just showed up right behind us, right on our bumper. We were flying down that road with this car staying right on us, and then, as fast as it came, it was gone. We then started hearing the sounds of chainsaws and women screaming, it was so real that we rolled down the windows to try and figure out where it was coming from, but it seemed to be all around us. Then all of a sudden the car is back, right on our tail again with the brights on, and again we were trying to get out of there as fast as we could. As we got a little closer to the end of the road, it was then that it sounded like we were being chased down with the chainsaws. At the beginning of the road, there is a church, I promise you, after we passed that church, there were no chainsaws, no screaming, and no mysterious car, there is just no way anyone could have done what that car was doing, it came up to us three or four times. But when we passed that church, all went silent, and then we reached the end of the road. There have been several other stories from people in my town of similar things happening to them on that road, I have never been more scared in my life. This isn't my story, but it is about my parents and two incredibly close family friends. Before I was born, the four of them used to hang out a lot. They would often drive far out into the Mojave Desert to just party and drink around a fire and have a good time. Anyway, for this story, I'm going to call my dad Conrad, my mom Stacy, and their friends, whom I'll call Brad and Gina. So they drive way out into the desert to have a fire. It's summertime, and it's hot. Although it is the middle of the night, it's still definitely not cold. Well, my mom Stacy and her friend Gina are starting to get scared about tarantulas, and they decided they didn't want to camp out there after all. So all four of them started driving back. It's like 2 AM. They were on a dirt road that went on for miles and miles with nothing on it. Suddenly up ahead in the headlights, they saw a man in a long black trench coat with a wide brimmed hat, and the collar of his coat pulled up, walking along the side of the road going in the same direction they were driving. My dad grew up hitchhiking a lot and used to pick up hitchhikers as well, so my mom knew my dad would consider stopping and talking to this guy to see if he needed a ride. But they had a terrible feeling about him. My mom always said that the way he was walking, the way he looked and was dressed, and how he was out in the middle of nowhere, he was just emitting this really messed up energy that felt absolutely terrifying and even evil. Gina felt the same way. My dad starts joking, hey, let's pick this guy up, and my mom and Gina immediately start screaming and crying and begging him not to. They were in the back seat, with my dad driving and Brad in the passenger seat. Gina was even punching my dad in the back, screaming, no, don't stop. I guess my dad slowed way down as he passed him, and they all turned to look at him as they went by. However, the moment that they passed him, he was gone. It was as if he disappeared into thin air. It's not like there were rocks or trees to hide behind, and the weird thing is, I grew up hearing this story from my parents while living far away from their friends. When I was very young, we moved up north, and they lost touch. Although whenever we'd come back to California to visit, we'd always get together with them, and it was like nothing had changed. I moved back here to California as an adult, and I work for Gina now. One of our first conversations when I came back was about the hat man. She brought it up, not me. And she said, word for word, the exact same story that my parents always told me growing up. To be honest, I've always secretly feared yet been intrigued by this entity because of their story, and there are so many more that I have now read online. I couldn't believe it was such a big phenomenon when I first found it on the internet because I was growing up hearing my parents' stories long before the internet existed. 
Last weekend, I decided to drive up to this nice area in northern Catalonia that I've visited previously. I did some hiking, and to avoid paying for a campground, I decided to drive up the mountain, about 15 minutes up from the nearest town, to a calm pasture on top of the mountain, which I've visited before. It was only 9 pm, I was clear minded and still quite awake, but I tilted my driver's seat back and closed my eyes. Within about a minute, something big hits and rocks my car, coming from the rear right side, opposite me. I think, okay, I just imagine that. And close my eyes again. About a minute later, the same exact thing, boom. And the car rocking side to side. Now I'm freaked out. I know there are lots of big cows up there, so I thought it must be a cow. It could be a person, but the force was large, and despite that, it's a quite remote place in the pre-Pyrenees where nobody goes at night. So I get out to investigate. With a flashlight in hand, I walk all around the car, shining the light into the distance. Nothing. This was in a pasture, where I could see for about 100 to 150 meters in every direction, see video link below, so there was no way something could have hit the car and then run and hid. I get back in the car to think about what to do. Within about 5 seconds, another hit, and the car shook. That's 3. Having known there was no one or thing around, I knew the only option was that it was a spirit. I get out, and after looking around the car again, I speak out, saying, look, I just want to sleep here for the night, then I'll be gone. Please just let me sleep here. I get back in the car, and within 5 to 10 seconds, again, a fourth big hit, and the car rocks side to side. I knew it was time to leave. So I back the car up, turn around, and start taking off back down the mountain. I immediately felt the thing was in the car with me, making sure I left. I even turned my head around to look in the back, absolutely sure I would see something. I rolled down the windows and yelled, please, just go. Let me be. I'm leaving, alright? After about 3 minutes of driving, I felt like it had left. I get down the mountain to the town, park the car, and call a close friend. We spoke for an hour and a half until she could calm me down. She had chills going down her spine, as she knew me well and knew that what I explained was real. My life changed that night. About 5 years ago, my wife and I were coming home from a late job helping to set up a retail store's counters, displays, etc. at the time of our encounter. It was after 2 a.m. The road back to the house we lived in was a little over an hour's drive on a rural road with multiple miles of nearly single lane, poorly paved road in the redwoods of the Pacific Northwest. As we drove towards the end of the worst part of the road, I sped up to 35 miles per hour. At this point, I noticed a strange phenomenon. The passenger side headlight seemed to have a black shadow of sorts running along the side of the truck. It's difficult to explain, but it was as if this dark spot was consuming the light. Initially, I thought I was tired my vision blurred, perhaps, and I rubbed my eyes. The phenomenon remained with the truck for a couple hundred yards. A bit shaken, I asked my wife if she had seen something strange. I will never forget her reply. What I could see driving was just the obscure dark form keeping up with a vehicle moving 35 miles per hour for hundreds of feet. She replied with shock in her voice, wait, you saw that too? I asked what she had seen. From the passenger seat, she saw this thing run down the hillside towards the vehicle, saying it was shaped similar to a large cat, but its form had a smoky appearance. I have often thought of this event and truly wonder what we saw that night. One summer, I took a long road trip with a friend around the southwestern US. We hit up everything we wanted, and because we're young and don't give 2 SHT about most things, we were driving long hours at any time of day. This specific late night or early morning, we were driving to a hotel just outside of the Grand Canyon. Now, we were certainly tired, and it was late, but we hadn't been driving long enough to really be in any danger to ourselves. So I was driving down this two-lane road, trying to find our hotel, with my friend helping me. We see some lights ahead of us, clearly the headlights of a car in the distance. We move on from them and keep looking so we can finally get some rest. The lights get closer. And closer. They looked like they were heading straight for us without stopping. Both of us realize what's happening, and I actually drove off the road to avoid being hit by whatever was attached to those lights. But there was nothing. As soon as I drove off the road, they disappeared. My friend and I both saw them, and we weren't tired enough to have such a frightening double hallucination. Nothing passed by us, nothing turned, it was just completely gone. There was no car, it was just like they vanished into thin air after they did their job. My friend and I were definitely freaked out because there was nothing else in the area. We still had a ways to go before we got to our hotel. It took a few minutes to regroup, but eventually we made it to the hotel and spent the night before exploring the next day, 
but there was and is no explanation for what forced us off the road that night in the middle of nowhere. My girlfriend and I had some time off work, so we decided on a much needed getaway for a long weekend. This was early 2019, late January or February, so it was pretty darn cold. That being said, if you know anything about the southern USA, it doesn't get that cold. This was one of those rare days when it was 30 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just trying to compile all the events surrounding the sighting, so bear with me here. We were on a highway in a swampy area. I have no idea the exact location, but I can say it was in southern Alabama and close to Mississippi. There were lots of bridges. I wish we could have gotten pictures, but the car was moving around 60 miles per hour when it happened. My GF cries out for me to look, and I turn my head to glimpse a grotesque looking creature. This thing was hunched down on all fours, possibly eating something. This all happened so fast, but I slowed down to get a better look. All of a sudden, the thing stands on two legs and has a humanoid figure, all except the head. The head was goat-like, but it had the body of a man. There were horns, and overall, the head area resembled a light-colored goat. The creature started back towards the woods, and we continued with our trip, but we couldn't stop talking about what we had just witnessed. I cannot be 100% sure of what we saw, this all happened so fast. My GF swears it was a man with a goat head, and I am certain I saw the same thing. When I was a teen, I lived in Flagstaff, Arizona. One night I was dropping a friend off at her house. She lived in a rural area, so it was extremely dark. Our parents didn't know we had snuck out, so I had to drive my car down the driveway with only full moonlight. My friend gets out of my car, we say our goodbyes, and she walks into her house. I'm walking to the driver's side of my car door, and out of the corner of my eye, I'm seeing a yellow, translucent human figure. I quickly jumped in my car, and whatever it was got in the back seat. I keep looking back in my mirror and seeing what looks like a person in the back seat. I wasn't driving home. I didn't want to wake my friend's parents up. So I drove to Jack End Box and sat under a streetlight. I could still see it. So I turned to whatever it was and said, I can see you. Then I heard a tapping on my passenger side window. The exact spot where I was seeing this yellow, translucent figure. I can hear that, I said, trying to sound confident. Then the yellow shadow moved from my back seat to the front. You just moved from the back seat to the front. After saying this, whatever it was got out of my car. The next day, I told my friend about this, and she said, as you were driving off, it looked like someone was sitting in the back seat of your car. Later, I heard tapping on the back sliding door. I went to see what it was, maybe thinking it was you. Nothing was there. In southern Georgia, Alabama, and all of Florida, there are these people they call night walkers. If you have ever driven through these areas late at night, you may have seen one. You will be miles from anything and see a random person standing on the side of the road staring at you. Personally, it happened to me most recently when I was going on spring break. On I-75 South, at about midnight between Ocala and Tampa, my girlfriend and I saw a person on the side of the road just staring at us. No broken down cars nearby, no cities anywhere near. He wasn't trying to hitchhike, he was just standing there. I brought it up with my friends, and they said they call them night walkers. They said that they are people who live in the forests and hope that someone breaks down on the road near them so that they can do unspeakable things to them. After talking to my friends who refuse to drive through southern Georgia at night, it has me concerned. Has anybody else heard of these night walkers? Or has anybody seen some random person on the road just staring at them? This experience happened to my uncle in Surelvo, Mexico, around the time my cousin was born in 1988. As he explained it to me, he was coming home from work in Monterey, about an hour's drive away. He had left his job site and noticed he was alone, walking through the street. He began hearing a whistling sound, as if someone were trying to get his attention. He got to his car and started driving out of the city, but he swears he now hears the same whistling noise inside his car. At this point, he began freaking out, feeling like he was being followed. He could hear something heavy jumping and landing on the trees he drove past. Once the trees ended and the arid land started, he no longer could see anything around him besides the road, but he still felt a presence following him. Now I feel I should explain where he lived at that time. His home was barely that. Four cinder block walls are held together with cement and standard trapezium metal sheets for a roof. His restroom and bathtub were separate from the house as they had pluming installed after. Now, at around 11 p.m., he arrived, thinking he would just disregard all the whistling and stuff. He walks in and finds my aunt giving my then infant cousin a bath. As he starts to relax and eat, he starts to hear the whistling again and walks over to my aunt to ask if she's hearing it too. 
she says she hasn't heard anything but is a real believer in witches, and she starts to freak out that her baby is still outside on the table waiting to be dressed. Believing that they take children, she turns around and looks at my then little cousin, and at that moment, they hear something big pounding footsteps on the metal ceiling. She runs out to the back to get him. The footsteps, as they say, followed her to the edge of the roof, and then what they suspect was a witch let out a low cackle. From that point on, the footsteps would follow my aunt and her baby throughout the house, always being right on top of them. My uncle did not sleep for fear of something happening. He would periodically hear whistling and would want to investigate, although as soon as he left the room, he would hear what sounded like someone getting back up on the ceiling and would return to my aunt's side. Once morning came, they found nothing on top of the house, no footprints or anything. Nothing like this ever happened again. This happened when I was 18. Me and my ex-girlfriend at the time decided to visit an old, beat-down cemetery in the middle of nowhere named the Gates of Hell. The ride there was fine. You go down a road named St. John's Road about 20 miles until you reach an old, worn-down gravel road that's messed up in itself. No lights anywhere around. Or no cell service whatsoever. After a while, we made it to the cemetery. We parked, and I kept trying to talk her into getting out. She said no. Even any guy friend I brought said no, so it didn't shock me. The vibes were definitely off that night. After about 5 minutes of telling ghost stories to her, she decides to get out only if I hold her hand the whole time. We got out. And I did. It was very dark. Very creepy. But nothing is out of the ordinary. Until we got back in my truck. Right then, she was acting weird. I was talking to her normally, but she was talking in a way I had never heard her. Saying things I never heard. Time goes on, and she reaches for a big hunting knife I had, takes it out of the case, and puts it very hard on her forehead. That's when I kind of freaked out. I took it from her and held on to it. Then I tried scaring her. She was a very timid person. 5'1", 100 pounds. Small girl, scared of her own shadow. Everything I did. She'd laugh the creepiest laugh. Started repeating many things over and over again. So I decided to leave. I wish it ended there. As soon as I put my truck in park, she starts freaking out, repeating more things over and over to me. So I reply calmly that I was just turning the truck around for when we do leave. So I turn around and face the exit with my lights on the old gravel road. I park, and it gets crazier. She starts trying to get closer to me. She repeats herself more. When it gets to the point that she says, they want you to, they want you to, they want you to, multiple times. I look out my window and see something I cannot even describe, almost running towards me. I take off down the gravel road. Trying to dodge trees, get away from the bumps. She's littering all over my truck. Her back is up against the top. Her arms are almost being broken, it looks like. She's screaming in ways I've never heard. Then I looked over. Her eyes are not black. But almost glowing red. This went on for the next 20 miles until I got to a gas station. I immediately called my friend and told him. She looks over and looks like she just woke up. She asked what happened, and it seemed like she had no memory of the event. On Halloween night, I was no older than 12 and my dad was taking me to one of those haunted houses. This one in particular was outdoors and advertised as having a Jurassic forest with dinosaurs, etc. My adolescent self couldn't resist, and the man my father was stopped at nothing to give me the moon. The directions to the place weren't your typical directions, turn here when you see. So naturally, my father can't find the place, and traveling from Alabama, he ends up somewhere near a large lake in Waterloo, Tennessee, far from any lights or signs of civilization. While turning a large, dark bend in the road, we notice a glow-in-the-dark cross, the kind marked for those killed in car accidents. That marks the place of the tragedy. As we neared closer, someone who appeared to be kneeling at the cross stood up as we passed. I remember turning around and looking out of the back window, seeing nothing but brake lights reflecting off of trees. I recall stating to my dad, someone was at that cross on Halloween, late at night all the way out here. He responded, yeah, that's pretty weird. Because we were heading in the wrong direction, we eventually turned around, and when we came upon that spot with the cross in the road, no one was nearby. We eventually found the haunted house we were looking for. I have a good memory of me and my dad. That shape standing in front of that glowing cross at night left such an impression that I remember vividly to this day. My ex, his brother, and I decided to have a day trip in a small area called Legion Campground in Tuella Canyon, Utah. We camped there for a couple nights before, and nothing weird happened. Well, aside from waking up to a cow trying to charge at my dog, there is only one entrance to the trail. This day there were no parked cars aside from our own, 
so I know for a fact that we were the only ones there. As soon as we get out of the car and onto the trail, I feel like we are being watched. So right off the bat, I warned them something was off, don't disturb anything. There are a few Native American tribes that consider areas of UT sacred land. Anyway, here's where it gets freaky. It is scary and silent. We can see wind going through trees, but there is no sound, not even birds. X was up front, his brother was right behind, and I was in the back. We were coming to the spot where there is normally a creek, but it was all dried out. We were all expecting to have to maneuver east and cross where the embankment wasn't so deep. My ex didn't believe in the paranormal. So I was thinking, okay, what's got him stopping in his tracks? He just froze. About 50 feet away, we see a crouched black figure. We first, of course, try to pin down what animal it could be. It wasn't identifiable and was moving away from us. The black figure quickly changed shape to have long limbs, almost like Slender Man, which allowed it to stretch across the embankment. Without the sound of an animal hitting the ground after a leap. Not a rock out of place. By this time, we were stepping backwards but still bewildered. This moment was about 10 seconds long, but it felt like time had been slowed. As we watched, it got on all fours, and we could see a long, skinny tail and feline-like ears. It walked a few steps on all fours, then changed its form to look like a bear and ran until it was no longer in sight. All I could think about to explain what we saw was matching the description of a skinwalker. Creepy as hell, I haven't been there since. This happened somewhere around the summer of 2009 to 2010. I was about 15 to 16 and coming home from, I think, Midnight Madness in Halliburton, Ontario, with a couple other buddies. I was in the back seat of my suburban friend on the way home. My best friend at the time was beside me. It was about a 35 minute drive back to where our cottages were in a private park just off of Elephant Lake Road. The park roads are all dirt, the main road is two cars wide, we were crossing in the main. I think we were coming down a straight part of the road, and my buddy locked up the brakes and started sliding. We all looked up, and there was an owl sitting in the middle of the road, looking back at us. We all just thought, well, that's weird. Thankfully, we didn't hit it and continued on. But further down the road, we came around a tight bend. We all happened to be looking out the front at the same time, and there were probably three to four white figures on the side of the road in our headlights. They all shot up in the air and disappeared really quick. One by one, we all kind of jumped and looked at each other, like, did we all just see that? Then, farther down the road, closer to the turn to the road to my house, there is a small bridge where two lakes connect. Between a little creek and a hill on either side of the bridge, when we got to the bottom, our headlights started pointing up the other side. All of a sudden, our friend in the passenger seat started counting one, two, and three all the way up to about eight, and there were probably more than that. Down the road, all these white figures kept shooting up in the air and disappearing as our lights hit them. I'm 26 now and still wonder about that night. There was some other weird stuff that happened while I was spending my teen years up there, and we have no idea what it could be. It always makes me wonder what else is out there. To this day, I still have no explanation for this. There are two separate instances, years apart. It's like 2 AM, and me, my friend, who was driving, and my boyfriend and his buddy are cruising around. We end up on the outskirts of the city, taking random back roads. We end up on this one road, and I start to feel off. As we progress down the road, I begin to get this horrible feeling that there is something bad on that road. I turn around and look at the guys in the backseat, and they look at me with the same look of fear. My friend, who was driving, doesn't really believe in this stuff. She figures something's wrong with the car, but I think she was feeling a watered-down version of what we were feeling. She pulls over to check the car, and the three of us just start panicking and screaming at her to get back in the car and turn around. We get the hell out of there. Once we're back on the highway, I just burst into tears. I had never felt anything so evil and frightening. A few nights later, while cruising with another friend, we decided to go back and check it out again. Well, he wanted to, but I did not. I remembered vividly the landmarks on the road, but we could not find them. I swear, we went down every side road we could find. A few years later, I'm cruising again late at night with just one friend. She wasn't there the first time. We end up on the opposite end of the city as the last time, and I take a road heading out of the city, and the feeling suddenly washes over me again. I noped the hell out of there while my friend wanted to keep going. What the hell is this? And why did it move? I live in Sydney, Australia. Just a few minutes from the city. At around 9.30 PM, my girlfriend and I went for a nice drive, cruising along the outskirts of Sydney. We ended up near Penrith after driving around for around an hour. I decided to park at a rest area, not to get out, 
as the place seemed pretty sketchy, but just to pull out our phones and determine how to get back home. To paint a picture, it's just alongside the highway. The place was empty, and there were no lights except for my car headlights. As I'm on my phone, my girlfriend covers her mouth with her hand and says, oh ducking hell, someone's there. We see a bit away behind the bushes, about 25 meters away, a really tall guy. I'm not great with words, so I'll try my best to describe him. About 2 meters tall, 6 feet 7. He's got white, tidy hair, if I saw him on the street or out at a bar during the day, I wouldn't think twice, except maybe for how tall he was. He didn't seem to notice us, despite the fact that my car's headlights are bright as duck. He wasn't facing us, he was looking to the left. I was a bit frozen with fear, seeing as there weren't any cars or people surrounding us to validate this guy's reasoning for being here, there was no way he was just behind those bushes to chuck a piss. My girlfriend grabbed my arm, insisting we get out of here, both still looking at the guy. He wasn't moving, yet not even a second later, he completely bent his back backwards, his body in a U-shape. I've never driven away so fast, and even typing this out makes me so ducking scared. I'm not sure how else to describe it. My girlfriend was crying on the way home, and I assured her it was just some methed up junkie hanging around, but it didn't look like that sort of thing was possible. Maybe for a really flexible person or athlete, but to also do it at such speed and not notice us. It creeps me the duck out. My father owns a small delivery service that operates out of Farmington, New Mexico. We mostly deliver small packages out to the middle of nowhere that are too much of a hassle for the larger delivery companies to bother with. My dad is the only employee, and we have a few pickup trucks and a trailer. One day we get a delivery out to Window Rock, Arizona, on the Navajo Reservation, about two hours from Farmington. My dad gets the call for the job while he is chilling with his Navajo friend, Travis, and his girlfriend. Travis mentions how he's got family in Window Rock that he hasn't seen in ages and suggests they go with him. I was about 6 or 7 at the time, and it was the summertime, so dad decides we'll go down together, he can do his delivery really quick, and then while Travis sees his family, we can go check out the Window Rock, a big rock face with a large hole in it that goes to the other side, pretty cool. We had to convoy in separate trucks since my dad's was loaded down with freight. We decided to bring along some talkie-talkies so we could communicate with one another. We spend our time in Window Rock, everything is generally uneventful, and we start heading home along the old highway with my dad and I in front and Travis and his girlfriend in their truck behind us. I honestly don't remember most of the Window Rock trip, but this next part I can never forget. We're somewhere on the highway between Window Rock and Gallup, New Mexico. It had just rained earlier in the day, and the road was kind of slick, so we were taking it pretty slow. On the left of the highway, there are nothing but sandstone cliffs, and on the right, there is a huge field separated from the road by a small barbed wire fence. We crest the top of this hill, and down at the bottom of the hill we see what appears to be a very large dog, sitting back on its haunches in the middle of the road, facing the cliffs. My dad calls over the radio. Hey Trav, do you see that big ass dog? Travis starts yelling back over the radio, that is not a dog. Speed up right now and hit it. He sounds almost hysterical. He just keeps screaming, hit it. JJ, you have to hit it. Please. Please. Hit that ducking thing right now. So my dad starts to speed up, and as we get a bit closer, I can begin to see it a little more clearly. It's covered in this brown, wiry, matted hair that appears to have dried blood all over it. It's still facing the cliffs, but the moment our headlights hit it, it turns and looks at us, and it has a... I don't know how else to describe it other than a mix between a bear's and a human's face. It looks twisted, distorted, and almost in pain. As we get closer to this thing, we start to realize it's actually ducking huge. Though it was still sitting on its haunches, it is about shoulder height with the hood of the truck. We get literally inches from hitting it when it lets out this scream that sounds like someone screaming as their lungs were filling with water, and it leaps backwards, towards the field, landing just on our side of the barbed wire fence. Then, with another leap, it was gone from sight. Travis comes over the radio again and says, holy SHT. Keep driving. We have to get out of here. We have to go faster. He kept repeating that last part. We have to get out of here, and we have to go faster. Pretty soon we were speeding like crazy, and just as we started to come near the outskirts of Gallup, we got pulled over. Travis pulls his truck over to us. Naturally, this makes the cop, a Navajo man himself, very on edge, and he immediately asks why Travis felt the need to pull over as well. Travis says, we just saw a skinwalker a few miles back, and it's been following us. The officer immediately turns white, stammers something about a verbal warning, gets in his car, and takes off. We do the same. 
We didn't see anything else that night, but when we got home, Travis refused to let us leave without taking some kind of Navajo totem thing that was supposed to keep it away. So about a year ago, I was living with my parents in the middle of nowhere. My best friend lived in town, and it was about a half hour drive to get to her house. Even though it took a long time, it was only two roads, 20 minutes on one, then a left, then 10 minutes on the other. Well, one night I was supposed to go over after she got out of work at 7 p.m. I went into my mom's room at about 6.55 p.m. to tell her that I was leaving and would be home later that night. As I was walking out the door, I looked at the clock, and it was almost exactly 7. I texted my friend and said I was leaving and would stop at the party store on the way to get us monsters and snacks. I left immediately and headed straight to her house, only stopping for 5 minutes at this party store. When I get to her house, I open the door and walk in, and she looks super confused. So I say, hey, I have snacks. She replied, oh, cool. I thought you fell asleep or changed your mind. I tried texting you. I asked why she'd think that, and then she said, well, it's been like two and a half hours since you texted me. She was right, it was almost 9.30. I checked my phone, but I had no missed calls or texts, and the time read 9.28. I have no idea what happened. I remember leaving the house and checking the time right before I left. Driving, what seemed like, 15 minutes to the store. Buying Flamin Hot Cheetos, Funyuns, and two Blue Monsters. Then she drove, what seemed like, another 15 minutes to her house. The monsters were still cold when I got there. She showed me the text she sent, but I never received any. Driving on that stretch of road still gives me anxiety issues like none other. I was driving in upstate New York, in a rural area east of Buffalo. I decided to take a detour to avoid paying the highway tolls. Big mistake, looking back. I ended up on some back roads in the middle of nowhere. This road went on and on. No people or end in sight. After about 30 minutes of driving on this one road, I decided to turn onto a side road so I could make a U-turn and go back to how I came. So, I turned to it. When I looked around, there were literally no signs of modern-day technology. It was like I was transported back to the 1800s. Wooden road signs looked like they were made from driftwood, and the road names were painted on them in white paint. This road was a dirt road with wooden houses. No electric poles. No cars. No mailboxes, even. My radio and phone didn't work either. I made a U-turn and was back within present-day civilization after about two minutes. The creepiest part? There was a sign showing the address of the house where I made the U-turn. It was 666 Hemlock Road. After I got home, I tried to research where I was via maps and MapQuest. There is no record of this address or road. An online search brought nothing up. I don't know what to make of this. Did I go back in time? Travel to a different dimension? On vacation through Tennessee one night, took the scenic route, lots of woods, dark two-lane roads, damp cool night air, loved it, as we were driving along doing about 50 and enjoying the fresh air with our windows rolled all the way down, we came to a curve. We slowed down to about 15 as we rounded the curve, and standing up ahead about 30 feet to the side of the road, our brights picked up the silhouette of a huge, tall man. Not a big foot, not a bear, but a man. He stood a good 7 feet tall, very imposing but on the slim side. This was an extremely isolated area, there were no houses, stores, or anything for about 50 miles. All woods and vines. Shocked at the creepy way he just stood there staring, we quickly rolled our windows up, and my husband took out his gun, just in case, and then sped up to pass this man. You couldn't make out his features, but you could feel he was looking right at you. Only the outline of clothes, jeans, and a t-shirt by moonlight could be seen, but he was standing far enough off the road to obscure details from car lights, yet still close enough to do damage if he ran out or at us. Once we passed, I turned to look back to see what he was doing, and he was gone. It scared us silly. We kept expecting him to suddenly appear in our back seat. We drove for at least an hour with our windows up, unable to shake the ominous feeling the sight of this man out in the middle of nowhere had caused. It was very strange. My wife and I are both college-educated professionals. About 12 years ago, we lived in northeastern Arizona, in southern Apache County, close to the Navajo Nation. We had no kids at the time and would typically go out to dinner after work on Friday nights. We would drive about an hour to a neighboring town, as our very small town had few good restaurants. As we were driving back, my wife was behind the wheel, around 9 or 10 p.m., we were both watching out for animals. It wasn't uncommon to see deer, antelope, and jackrabbits, which could damage our truck if hit. We'd also often see rats, mice, and prairie dogs too. 
So, as we're going along, all of a sudden this small, about 18 inches tall, bipedal creature comes running out in front of us. It ran from one side of the road to the other and disappeared in the cedar trees that are typical along the main highway where we were traveling. The most messed up part was that the thing was wearing clothes. It was dressed in a robe and had a pointy hat. We can't really remember the colors of the clothes, but we both agree that the hat was red. It did not look cute or friendly, it was more like the stuff of nightmares. Its skin was a dark brown or dark gray. Its face looked monstrous and was grimacing. I had the impression that it was very distressed and seemed to be running away from something or someone. It seemed oblivious to us in our truck. I looked over at my wife, who neither hit the brakes nor swerved whatsoever, and she's just looking straight ahead at the road. I seriously thought I had just had a hallucination. Not because I've had one before, but because I can't believe what I just saw. So I said, did you see that? To which she quietly replied, yeah. In order to confirm my own sanity, I needed to hear her say what she saw first. I then said, what did you see? She then said, like a little person with a wizard hat on? Then I said, yeah. What the duck? I honestly wouldn't believe my own eyes and memory if she hadn't seen it too. She's also said that if I hadn't seen it too, she would have completely shut it out of her mind and would have long forgotten it by now. In fact, I would have serious doubts if I had said what it was first and then she agreed with me. I was visiting my dad a few miles out from Modesto and was on my way home a little after 11 p.m. PST. I'd only been on the road for about 20 minutes when a big white thing stepped into the road and started slowly walking across the street. If I had to guess, it was probably a bit over 6 feet tall, and it was 100% not a person because I could partially see the road through it. It was translucent. It also looked like it was glowing a little bit, but not much. It's almost like how, if moonlight hits something right, it seems like it's glowing. I was only going about 30 and immediately stopped when I saw it. I sat there for what felt like a full minute but was probably only about 10 to 15 seconds, watching it take these creepy long strides across the road until it was on the other side and went out of view. It didn't seem to notice or acknowledge my presence at all. It was almost like it didn't even know I was there. At first, I thought it was a big person with a bedsheet over them, but when I saw it was translucent, I immediately froze up. I felt pins and needles in my hands, and my head got hot. I was so terrified. It's by far the most scared I've ever felt in one moment, but at the same time, I didn't feel threatened at all. It just felt like something I wasn't supposed to see. It also had no arms, and like I said, it took these really weird, long, slow strides across the street until it was just gone. I sat there for another 30 seconds or so until my body wasn't frozen up anymore, and I just kept driving. By far the most unsettling thing about it was how it walked. It walked like a person on stilts, almost. Kind of like the paste march you'd see characters do in vintage cartoons like Mickey Mouse. Not exactly like that, but I'm just trying to attach it to something I know. It was taking longer steps than any human could possibly take. I lived southeast of Buffalo as a kid in a rural area. My mom had taken a friend and me somewhere a few hours away. I think it may have been Letchworth State Park, but I can't remember exactly. My friend and I were around 12. On the way home, just as it was getting dark, we made a wrong turn somewhere and got very lost, this was before GPS or cell phones were common, probably around 1990. We were in the middle of nowhere and finally saw some lights down a road in the distance, so we turned down the road so we could find somewhere to ask for directions. The road wasn't paved, but it was pebbled over, as is common in some rural areas, so we didn't think much of it. When we drove into the town, it was like something out of a movie. There were people ice skating in a park in the center of town, all dressed in old-timey clothes. We thought we must be at some kind of Pioneer Days festival or the like, but then we noticed there were no cars anywhere around. No street lights, just what looked like gas lanterns. We were low on gas, but there were no gas stations visible. One small main street. When we drove in and parked, everyone stopped and looked at us. We all got freaked out, and none of us wanted to get out of the car. Then a man in an apron came outside from the building next to us, which looked to be some kind of general store. My mom rolled the window down and told him we were lost, and he just smiled and pointed up the road and told us we'd get home if we went that way. When we drove out of there, none of us spoke for a while because we were so weirded out. We went up a hill and down the other side, and then I remember that we were back on a main road and knew where we were. A while later, my dad and I went out during the day to see if we could find the place again, but we couldn't even find the road. I work at a casino, so I usually drive home pretty late at night. There really is only one road I drive down between my house and work, a fairly long stretch of a two-lane highway through a national park. By the time I leave work, this road is generally empty, 
and I see maybe a handful of cars my whole way home. It's not unusual to see lots of animals around. Mostly deer and possums, sometimes coyotes and foxes. Tonight, I saw a coyote off the side of the road standing on its back legs. I've never seen anything like it before. I mean, I've seen dogs and coyotes stand up like that, but not for more than a few seconds. This one was really just standing up like a sort of hunched over person. I don't know why this freaked me out so badly and made me feel really uneasy. As I drove past, I was looking in my side mirror to try to get another look at it, but I was super blind and it was dark. I don't like that it was kind of just wobbling back and forth and not really doing anything with its front legs, they were kind of just straight out in front of it. I think it might have been hit by a car or maybe a train. Where it was standing was right between the guard rail and the train tracks that run along the highway. But if it got hit, I think it would just be down, not standing weird. I live around the Great Lakes, and I have never heard anything about skinwalkers in this area, nor am I the biggest believer in it. Either way, it was very spooky to see late at night by myself, and I felt paranormal. I have a story, it isn't mine, but it happened to my uncle. He used to tell this story when we went camping, and it scared the lights out of me every time I heard it. We live in Utah, and my uncle, Mark, went on a mission at 19. They sent him to an Indian reservation in Arizona. They paired him up with a companion named Carl. When they first got there, there was a huge rift with the locals on the reservation about their being there. They didn't want my uncle and Carl to stay on the reservation grounds. Eventually they came to the compromise that they would stay on the outskirts in a trailer. This reservation wasn't very big and was located next to a heavily wooded area. The first night, they were trying to sleep when, all of a sudden, their trailer started to shake violently back and forth. Startled and not sure what was happening, they climbed under their table for cover. Mark could distinctively hear someone pushing it from both sides of the trailer, like a group of people. After about five minutes, it stopped. The next day, they made rounds on the reservation and were talking to the locals. Carl made a comment to one of the families that their trailer was shaking the night before. The family got very quiet and then told them they had to leave. They thought it was strange but didn't think much of it. The next night, it happened again. They awoke to their trailer shaking back and forth. Again, they climbed under the table until it stopped. This went on for two more nights. Anytime they tried to talk to anyone about it, they got quiet and told them to leave. Mark started thinking that, due to the tension of their arrival, the locals were doing this to scare them off the reservation. They then went into a convenience store, and they were talking together about how frustrated they were with the situation. The clerk overheard and said, they can't talk about it. It's forbidden. Confused, they ask him, can't we talk about what? The guy continues to tell them about the skinwalkers. He says they are evil demons that were once Native American witches. If they talk about it, the skinwalkers will come for their souls. They just walked out of there, baffled. They thought it was another scare tactic. So that night, when the shaking started again, my uncle decided to be brave and confront them. He went to the trailer door, flew it open, and yelled, hey. When he did that, he saw these three animals run off. Two were wolves, and one was a bear. But they looked strange, almost with human features. As he watched them run towards the trees, all three stood up on two legs and walked slowly towards the trees, making a human cackling laugh. It scared him so bad that they called their mission president that next morning and asked to be moved. They were relocated that day. For a year, nothing happened. One day, they announced that Carl was being relocated to another city and Mark was getting a new companion, Jimmy. They had to drive for about an hour to pick Jimmy up from the airport. The road they traveled went through the boundaries of the reservation. They arrived at about 8 p.m. and met Jimmy, and they went to leave. The mission president tells Jimmy, we are driving through a dangerous area at night, so we can't make any stops. If you need to use the restroom, you need to go now. Jimmy says, I am fine. The mission president gets serious enough to even freak out Mark, I am not kidding, go to your business. Jimmy was insistent that he was fine. So they hit the road. As they were about 30 minutes into the drive, they were going through the area of the reservation boundaries, and Jimmy started complaining that he needed to pee badly. The mission president says, we can't stop here. You'll have to hold it. Jimmy keeps going on, I really can't hold it. So the mission president stops the car and says, okay, but you will do your business next to the door, and if I say get into the car, you better get into the car fast. With a look of confusion, Jimmy says, all right, opens the door, and starts to do his business. About five seconds later, the mission president says nothing and just yanks Jimmy into the car and floors it. Jimmy and Mark start freaking out. What is going on? The mission president says nothing and just increases his speed. All of a sudden, 
Mark sees something next to the car to his right. A giant, wolf-looking man was running on two feet next to the car. Mark looked at the speedometer, they were going over 60 miles an hour and still increasing. The wolf creature kept right next to the car for 10 minutes until it finally took off into the trees. Shaking, Jimmy gets out of the car when they arrive, they didn't speak through the whole ordeal, and says, what did I just see? The mission president says, next time I tell you to take care of your business, you take care of your business. I've driven Clinton Road at night. I live in NY, and a few friends and I've decided it would be fun to drive out to Clinton Road and see what all the fuss was about. Well, it started out fairly normal, a winding country road. At one point, I was looking off through the trees, and I could see what looked like a large bonfire. What was weird was that when we started out, there were no other cars on the road. We spent a good hour or so driving up and down the road, turning around a few times. No other cars are coming or going. I never saw any other cars parked on the side of the road. Eventually we reached the bridge where it is said that a little boy drowned, and if you sat long enough, you could hear the boy crying. It's also said that if you toss a coin down into the water, the boy's spirit will toss it back up to the road. Nothing happened there. What was terrifying is that when we finally decided to call it a night and drive back home to NY, we were followed by a pickup truck to the end of Clinton Road. At first, they must have had their lights off because none of us saw the truck approach. Suddenly there were headlights behind us, and when we made it to the end of Clinton Road, they had turned around and disappeared into the darkness. It is said that there are Satanists who perform rituals in the woods. Even Ku Klux Klan meetings. I'm not sure who it was that made sure we left Clinton Road, but one thing is for sure, I don't want to ever find out. I live in Northern California in a smallish town outside of Sacramento. This event happened sometime in the winter of 2015. I was over at my friend's house when he was throwing a small kick that day, and I was helping prepare. Two of my other friends caught a ride on the way to the party, but they needed a ride back afterwards, and I told them not to worry as I would give them a ride home after the party ended. It was around 12 o'clock to 1 a.m. at this time. Let me just clarify that I was neither tired nor inebriated, we just got done partying, and what not, so I was still very well awake. My friends wanted to go home, so I went and started the car. At the time, I had a girlfriend, so she was sitting in the front passenger seat, and my two friends were sitting in the back. We hit the road and started driving. I decided I was going to take some back roads that lead to the highway. My friends lived in a town up the hill. The whole time we were on the road, we did not see one car, which was a bit strange as there are usually at least a couple on the road, from people working night shifts and whatnot. I didn't really think much of it. We reached a stoplight that led down the main street through my town and would take us to the freeway. On this road, there is a small airport for small planes, and then there is a convenience store. Other than that, there are just trees and some houses here and there. I was driving down the road, which is relatively straight, so I could see a fairly long distance in front of me. As I came over a little hump in the road, I could see there was something in the middle of the road, about a quarter to a half mile away. The object was a pretty good size, from a distance, it looked like a grey tarp or a big plastic bag laying on the road. I just thought maybe someone lost it while hauling it on a trailer or something, but anyway, there was room on the shoulder for me to go around, so I wasn't too worried. At this time, I was approaching the object that was on my side of the car, and I was going maybe 25 miles per hour just to be cautious as I passed it. I was about 15 to 20 feet away from this thing about to pass it, and this is when the most unexplainable thing happened. This thing that I thought was an inanimate object gets up, and I mean, gets up quickly. From what I could see, it was 8 to 9 feet tall. It then spreads its wings, which have at least 15 to 20 feet of wingspan. It then flies right over the hood of my car, I'm talking about 2 feet above, and I can see this thing as clearly as day. Its head then turns to me as it's about to fly out of my line of sight, and what I saw still haunts me. This thing made direct eye contact with me, and its face was humanoid-ish, it had bright red eyes and some weird beak for a mouth, almost like an owl or a moth. That was when my brain realized what was happening, and my first instinct was to slam on my brakes. We came to a hauling stop, and I was looking through my rear window trying to find this thing. My girlfriend and both of my friends in the back then started yelling and told me to go frantically. I hauled ass out of there, my girlfriend and both friends were both yelling. What was that? To this day, I have no idea what we saw, I'm not sure if this is considered a glitch, but what I saw did not belong here. I asked my girlfriend and both friends what it looked like, and they described exactly what I saw. We did not sleep well that night. About a month ago, a buddy of mine, his girlfriend, and myself were returning to Cisco from a jam session in Abilene. It had been a pretty fun night of passing around instruments and, admittedly, a few joints, and at the time of the event, 
We were all pretty straight. We were between mile 310 and 313 markers when this all happened, and it happened so quickly, all in the blink of an eye. I was watching the road from the back seat in the middle as my friend absentmindedly smoked a cigarette out the driver's window. His girlfriend was messing around on Instagram or something, and suddenly a woman with long dark hair and pale skin, draped in flowing white clothing, appeared in front of the driver's side wheel. It was almost like we passed through her and passed just by her at the same time. The reactions of me and my friend were pretty much second for second, exactly at the same time. He swerved slightly but at the same time ripped his arm away from the window, dropping his cigarette, and screaming Holly Ishid. At the same time his reaction started, I was shouting, do you ducking see that? I felt something very cold wash over me quickly. I turned in my seat and saw nothing on the road behind us in the wash of headlights. I had seen her up until now and lost sight of her at the window beside me and to my left. At this time, my friend and I were freaking out in unison, and his girlfriend was trying to understand why. He proceeded to tell me that he freaked out because he felt a warm touch slowly drag on his skin as he passed her, and he saw her the same as I did, clear as day. I was living in the tiny house off the Scanton Road exit at the time, and it's right on the service road. I got very little sleep that night. I haven't looked up if there have been any significant events there or if it's a comment on that part of the highway, but anyway, that's my story. I cannot drive for medical reasons, blindness and migraines triggered by flashing lights. I do, however, use Lyft and Uber a lot. We picked up a hitchhiking ghost. I swear to duck, we picked up a hitchhiking ghost. I always do the rideshare slash pool options because I'm cheap and don't care. I was on my way home late from the Arsenal Bar in LA, and it's on the other side of the hill from where I live. We took the canyons back home. Of course, the phone dings with will be joining your ride. No biggie. I'm sitting in the front seat because the back is already full. We drop those people off and go to pick up the new person. She gets in. She doesn't talk, but she doesn't pull her phone out either. The driver is kind of like, hey, what the duck do I care? And I'm schemozzled on $5 Jack and Cokes because it was trivia night and my team came in third. Now, we're arcing up through the canyon and it's dead quiet and dark. There are not too many other drivers out, and there are not a lot of homes. The girl finally pipes up. You can let me off here. The map does show her destination is here, in the middle of a pitch black empty field. The driver asks her, are you sure? In that tone of voice that says, ma'am, I don't care if you are on drugs, if you get murdered, I get a one star rating. Let me out here. So, poor bastard, he does. He pulls over and goes to get out to open the door for her, but before he can even get the seatbelt off, her door is open, and she's gone. I mean, gone. Gone, gone. I don't know if she took off in a dead sprint and we missed her or if she dissolved into the mist. All I know is that the back passenger door was open, there was suddenly no girl to be seen, and we were in the middle of an extremely creepy canyon road that was somewhere between Sunset and Laurel Canyon, and both the driver and I were just super, super done. I finished the ride in silence, got to my house, and went in without daring to look behind me. I kept holding onto my cat and my stuffed pony, which I've had since forever.